Excellent! Last week, EVGA invited a small group of tech writers and YouTubers to their US headquarters in Brea, California. Jay and Kyle were both there, also Steve from Gamers Nexus, and we got a little tour and it was all quite lovely. EVGA wanted to show us their newest graphics card series. No, it's not a Vega card or a 1080 Ti, but a second lineup of NVIDIA 10 series based cards with ICX technology. They're not just slapping new coolers on existing GPUs though. These cards have completely redesigned PCBs and EVGA has patents granted or pending for 11 new integrated technologies in these cards. Before I get into what some of those are though, why would EVGA launch a new product line in the middle of a GPU's life cycle like this? Many of you may immediately point out to the problems that they have with the 1080 and 1070 for the win cards, which in a very limited number of cases caught fire while in use due to overheating VRMs. Limited, yes, but it was enough that EVGA decided to issue a recommended firmware update and ship customers a new thermal pad kit if they wanted it. They did not deny that the VRM issue definitely pushed this launch forward for ICX a little bit more quickly, but it would be wrong to say that this is 100% a reaction to it. They were working on these designs long before that story broke. Also, to be clear, the ICX series cards, which will come in GTX 1060, 1070, and 1080 variants, will not be replacing the current ACX cards. The issue with the ACX cards has been resolved, they're still for sale, and these ICX cards will probably cost $20 to $30 more. Here is what that extra money will get you though. First off, of course, as mentioned, they're gonna be available in 1070, 1060, and 1080 varieties. I have the 1080 for the win two right here, and you'll notice two after the different typical naming schemes from EVGA to indicate ICX as well as, of course, ICX logos on the box. Now these GPUs have nine sensors that are integrated onto the PCB. They're specifically geared to test the GPU temperature, uh, providing additional thermal probes beyond what's already there in the GPU itself. Uh, power and memory areas as well. The new PCB design allows these sensors to be placed in close proximity to those heat generating components because especially if you look at NVIDIA GPUs over the past few years, they've gotten very efficient. And in fact, the GPU is not always the hottest part of the graphics card anymore. In fact, VRMs and memory can overheat as well. So keeping tabs on the temperatures for those critical, critical components is very important. Now they're gonna check and monitor these temperatures via MCUs or micro control units and they've scattered these across the board. These are programmable from my understanding and they can actually do lots of different things. So whereas right now they're being used for things like temper temperature control and reactive lighting on the board, they could be programmed potentially to do other things as well. Another advancement is asynchronous fans. They actually have uh, separated their fans so that the left one is primarily there and tied to GPU temperatures and it's actually gonna be more directly cooling the GPU uh, as well. And then the right fan is actually gonna be tied to your memory and your power temperatures. The upshot to that is that if your GPU starts to get hot, the left fan will spin up. If your memory or your VRM start to get hot, the right fan will spin up. And then of course, if everything starts to heat up, if you have the card under serious load, they'll both spin up, but they'll spin at different speeds and you can actually control them individually. There's two separate fan uh, curves available in the Precision X OC software. So you can have control over both of those and tune them to your heart's content. EVGA also redesigned the base plate and the back plate for this card. They are die cast and they are form fitted so that they can make more contact with the different heat generating parts of the GPU. So they're gonna actually act more as heat sinks now. Base plates and back plates have been able to do this to some extent in the past, but EVGA has expanded on their design, making more direct contact with those vital components and creating what they're calling pin fins, just to uh, create a little bit more surface area on the base plate itself. And uh, that should theoretically allow more heat to be uh, sunk into those heat sinks, and then of course dissipated as the air flows over it. They've also redesigned the actual aluminum fin stack itself. They have created what they're calling a half open design. So they have kind of L shaped fins that are staggered. And that's to allow both more surface area, but to also allow the air to flow through there a little bit more easily. Uh, when doing side by side comparisons with the old for the wind design, they noticed that they would get actual pushback from the uh, fans as they were pushing air onto the fins. Whereas this allows the air to flow through it more easily uh, so you don't get that bounce back effect from uh, the fans trying to actually cool the fins off. Uh, you also have more direct airflow and uh, it can flow through the fin holes that are there as well. Just, just little holes staggered throughout those fins. Again, more airflow and uh, according to EVGA's testing, also lower temperatures you're gonna get because of that. 
They've integrated a safety fuse onto the board as well. This one seems to have limited uh, actual usage in my personal opinion. It's really there as a worst case scenario fail safe. If you sp spill solder all over your, your the back of your, your graphics card and then you try to power it on or something, that fuse should pop before uh, more vital components overheat. So it could, again, in those extreme worst case scenarios, maybe pre pre prevent a fire in your uh, computer but it's not something that's like you use it serviceable or anything like that. If that fuse goes, you're probably gonna have to RMA the board, but it may allow EVGA to do more recovery from RMAs uh, and cards that actually do fail. Uh, now again, just to point out, the ACX coolers will still be around along with the ICX coolers. Uh, the ACX coolers will be a little bit less expensive and you can expect the ICX cooler based GPUs to be about 20 to $30 more. So let's talk some testing next. And first I wanted to share just some of the footage that I had of uh, EVGA's test setup because they did have some FLIR cameras there and they were doing actual visual thermal load testing. Basically they had a For the Win card set up right next to a For the Win 2 card. Uh, they had the cameras point at the back. Both the cards were running at the same frequency, running the same test. And uh, visually you could, you could look at the thermal readouts and tell that yes, the For the Win 2 cards are staying cooler uh, and we can assume that is due to the design integration of the additional cooling components uh, in particular when you're looking at the back plate because that is where some of their issues came up with the previous for the win card now i was able to do some load testing myself uh, just some basic tests running unigen heaven and I found that with everything at stock, uh, the GPU was hitting 71 degrees Celsius. Uh, the power was at 70 degrees Celsius. Memory was about 72 degrees Celsius. And those were fluctuating within a few degrees of each, of each other. But uh, if you look at the new EVGX Preci EVGA Precision X OC software, and they've de delivered us uh, an early version of it here, you can immediately see the difference in that you have GPU temp, power temp and memory temp listed right there. They've also put little checkbox, well not checkboxes, but color boxes right next to them. And that is because you can control these temperatures uh, by simply going, well, as long as you get into the advanced functions, which I've completely forgotten how to get to. Uh, here's that fan curve. Uh, I believe they need to update this because the drop down isn't working properly to select either one, but here's where you would be able to select either fan and control it. Again, we're working with a fairly early revision of the software. Uh, and then here in the advanced uh, tabs section, you can see that you can control still the appearance LED and uh, they, they should add some more versions to this, I think. I like demo one, that's usually what I go with. Uh, thermal LED right here though is what you have some additional control over as well. So the thermal LEDs are three separate LEDs that they've integrated onto the cooler. Uh, they're all labeled G, P, and M. So you have uh, one for G for GPU, P for power, M for memory. So I started off having it set to follow badge color. So it just means it'll set it up and match uh, with the colors that the rest of the RGB L uh, LEDs are showing. Um, if you want it to be matchy matchy, you can assign it a, an ambient color. So if you just specifically want to tell each of those LEDs what to do, you can do that as well. Or you can do the uh, bit more practical means of showing temperature color here with those. So as you can see, uh, you set a temperature range for each item. Uh, and then it will change the color of the LED so you can get a quick visual uh, look at, at what's going on with your graphics card without even needing to know too much or look at on-screen utilities or something like that. So um, right now it's set to be blue when it's, when it's pretty cool. And then once it gets above 60, it'll turn green. And then if it hits 83 or more, it'll turn red indicating, hey, it's too hot right now. You need to turn up your case fans or something like that. Beyond that, uh, all of the other functions that you might have come to expect uh, and, and when it comes to the EVGA utility are still there. You can still overclock just as you did before. Uh, you still have access to sensors. And uh, actually speaking of sensors, you don't still have access. You now have access to sensors as well though. And here's a quick look at that. Uh, we can see the memory sensors here. Uh, these are actually on the front side or the, uh, the, the side of the PCB that the cooler is on. And then we also have more sensors that are arrayed on the back side. Uh, four over here for, I'm sorry, five over here for power. Uh, that one that's added for GPU. And then of course those three for memory. And we can see the individual temperature of all of those. If you want overclocking everything like usual, you still have all of those abilities here, the fan curves, saving your profiles, all that good stuff. So this is an enhancement to the Precision X uh, OC utility. And uh, it seems to be fairly functional from uh, at least as far as I've played around with it so far. Speaking more realistically and a little bit more critically though, uh, they're not using new GPUs. They're still 
GTX 1080 GPUs or 1070s or 1060, whatever the case may be for the card that you might happen to get. So we're not looking at a vast difference or really any even significant difference when it comes to actual performance. I did attempt some overclocking with this card and I found that it overclocked just about the same as most of the other GTX 1080s that I've tried. Uh, I was able to hit 2050 megahertz pretty stable with everything set to stock. Uh, I cranked the fans up to about 2000 RPMs which did add some noise but brought the temperatures down by about 10 degrees so instead of hovering around 70s, low 70s, they were hovering around, around low 60s. That did allow me to get about 25 megahertz more uh, when it came to my overclock, so about 2,075. But again, you're not looking at night and day difference. Uh, you shouldn't be expecting to get these cards and suddenly you're gonna get two, three, 400 megahertz more unless you're you know, doing some really crazy cooling stuff with them or going crazy with the voltage or that kind of thing. I didn't go that far when it comes to testing. Um, the other thing that you wanna bear in mind is that again, those other cards are still available. So if you're considering an ICX card, you should really consider what you want and don't buy it because you're expecting it to be insanely faster than the other 1080s that are there on the market. Buy it because you like the technology, buy it because you like the concept of keeping better tabs on which different parts of your card are getting hotter, or buy it because you like the basic concept that EVGA has come up with here. Uh, I asked them very specifically, do you think Nvidia is gonna start taking any of these ideas that you've integrated and possibly integrating them into Founders Editions or making them standard across cards? They couldn't really comment on that, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit more active monitoring of the different areas of the graphics card, especially if it helps keep things stable by uh, adjusting fan speeds or just uh, more active cooling when it comes to those hot spots like VRMs and memory, the other stuff you, do, you don't always consider besides the GPU. But guys, that is gonna do it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. This has been a quick introduction and some brief testing of the ICX cooler. As mentioned, I was there with quite a few other tech uh, journalists as well as YouTubers. So I'm gonna actually dig up their stuff that they've been writing as well. I'm sure there's more testing that's been going on besides just what I've gone over. So I'll post links to uh, their content in the description down below. Uh, and then I am planning on using this ICX based EVGA GTX 1080 for the win too in my February builds. Uh, so stay tuned for that too, and I'll be doing some additional testing with it. So if you have any ideas, spe specific things you want to see me work out, please leave those comments down in the comment section below. Thank you as always for watching this video, and we'll see you next time.